When we go online or we watch TV, we like to assume that we're the ones making the choice when, for example, products are marketed to us through ads and other ways. We think that, oh, we're the one making the choice, we're the consumers. But this book that I just read, The Attention Merchants, kind of has a very different perspective. And it's one I've heard elsewhere, but I've never seen it so clearly illustrated. Here is the book by Tim Wu. He wrote another book called The Master Switch. I read it a few years ago that was really good. And this book, though, is sim similar. It covers a lot of similar territory. But like I said, we go to these things, like we go online, with use all these great free services like Google and whatever that they seem great, but really his point of view, Tim Wu, is that we're actually tuning in and giving our attention to these things and we're actually the thing that is being sold to these marketers. So our eyeballs are a commodity that is up for grabs. When you start to see it from that perspective, it's, the world becomes a little more uh, disturbing and we realize that Every time we use something, it's, it's pretty much impossible to avoid some kind of advertising, even if it's subtle advertising like product placements or articles that are actually advertisements designed to look like a natural article. Now, most media books, books about media, whatever that means, are either one of two things. They're either about the media, you know, like news companies and websites and these huge conglomerates that have so much publishing power and ability to put things before the public's eyes. And then there's also kind of the more Marshall McLuhanish, <laughs> McLuhanish uh, things in the, in the vein of Marshall McLuhan where it's about the effects of media itself and how that uh, changes our perception of the world. This book is really in the middle ground. It covers both very equally well, which is why I liked it so much. Tim Wu really goes back in time to the the early origins of when this model emerged and he, he finds a newspaper that did something a little different. Like there had been newspapers and they charged money and they'd even had some ads, but his, this guy in the past, this guy said that, uh, what if I put out a newspaper that actually lost money, but if I got enough from the advertisers, I would recoup my money and turn a profit. And that's when this whole model emerged, according to Tim Wu. It's a fascinating narrative that it comes up again and again throughout history that advertising, which is, you know, Google's main business model is run on ads. And that form of coercion, though, it really has a detrimental effect on our world. And we're living in it. And I, I would say that this last election had a good deal to do with this. So. Uh, it's not necessarily beneficial to anyone. And I, from what I've seen, it can't go on. It has to, we have to have a new model. And I'm, I'm really interested in this new idea of uh, a contrary model to advertising and how we can get away from it. And after reading this book, it makes me not want to watch TV, not want to go online as much as I can, because it's everywhere in our world is, is becoming subject to ads and it's it's horrendous it's it's subtle and it shows up in ways that you don't even think of you know product placements are so insidious and there's some things like for example fantasy tv shows that aren't in our world they can't, can't really have like you know an advertisement for a soft drink because they don't have that in their world so that's one of the few i guess refuges from all the product placements and all the ads that are we're subject to. It's, but you can't really escape it. You know, you, you walk down a street, there are billboards, there are, there are buses with billboards on the sides. There's more and more advertising everywhere in new and innovative ways. This, is, this has that quote, I forget who said it, but somebody said like, the greatest minds of our generation are being spent figuring out how to coerce people and how to make them buy shit. So it's like, ah, what are we doing to ourselves? It's really sad. It's, it, we need to fit, come up with a better model. I have some ideas. I'm actually working on a project in the next few weeks. I'm going to probably post it on YouTube and release it as a torrent. And just, it's just this kind of booklet about these ideas, about how we can kind of move away from this attention merchant's model, which is so destructive to our world. It's sickening. Tim Wu talks a little about ad blockers, which 
for a long time, Safari and uh, certain operating systems or web browsers didn't have the capability of allowing ad blocking because it was such a huge part of web commerce to, to do that would just be a, a huge diversion of, of uh, our economy. So like Apple clearly didn't want to do that for a long time for whatever reasons, whatever alliances they had with Google or, I mean, they're their biggest competitor. So at some point they just decided we're not going to, we're going to allow ad blocking and it's had a huge effect. I would say that, I mean, this is just an opinion, but you know, our last election, I think a lot of it came down to people, I mean, people that don't have ad blockers and that have to watch, that watch through television commercials, radio commercials, advertisements all over the internet. If you don't have an ad blocker, if you don't have, you know, some form of TV service or BitTorrent or something that allows you to get away from commercials, you're living in a totally different world from the people that do cut that stuff off. And I'm not saying they don't get ads, they do. It's, it's impossible, like I said, to avoid. They're everywhere. But they're getting a lot less than those people that just allow unfiltered coercion all over the place. It's, uh, when I see a commercial, when an ad manages to make it to me, I'm just like full of, I'm just so disgusted. I'm like, how did this, this advertisement make it before my eyes? And uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, very little TV in fact. And uh, when I do, I just, I hate product placements. I, I just, I abhor that stuff. So I, I really try and get away from it as much as possible, but it, you can't do it. And it's, it's part of our whole system and we need to come up with something better. This book also makes it clear that at the highest level of these companies and sometimes governments that, that are putting out tons of propaganda themselves in subtle ways, even, you know, quote unquote, democratic governments like ours, the United States, they put out propaganda. You just, it comes in very subtle packages and how they, who they ally themselves with to, to market things, it's, it happens. At the highest levels, there are no scruples about what what kind of what is allowed in advertising there's no limits if they want to do something if they want to get something before people's eyes they will and they will it's scary some some of these methods that they use so uh read this book and become aware of them at least but there's always going to be new ones and they're not there's no laws when these things first emerge there's no laws and limits to what they can do so they'll rather ask forgiveness than permission and in a lot of cases they won't even you won't even know about that they're doing this so they won't even need to ask forgiveness i also really liked how this book shows that our eras and our i mean our epochs are defined by the media that we're using you know then we think of the 1950s as this really conformist era and i mean i i knew that that's when television came of age and really became something that was shot into all these people's homes all of a sudden it became this collective experience where they we were all tuned into the same programs, the same ideas. And that really, you could see how quickly that streamlined us. And some people obviously became aware of it and there was, you know, quote unquote, rebellions against it, but it was there and we're still subject to whatever our current environment is in media terms so that when we're in it, we don't even, we're not even aware of it. That's the insidious part of it. But, you know, a few years later, we can look back and see what was happening. But we have to become aware of the media that we're using. That's, that's something that I, Marshall McLuhan and James Joyce are just so, I think they help you become aware of that kind of stuff because you can't escape it. You're always using media of some sort unless you're you know, really deep in meditation or dreaming or something. There's media forces that work all around you. Everything that is designed is a form of media. This board, this wall, this camera, and this angle, this method of creating a film and communicating to people, it's a form of media that you've allowed yourself to tune into. And if you're aware of it and you're choosing it, that's great, but be aware of it. So, The Attention Merchants, I know the title's cut off because I usually always get my books from the library. It is by Tim Wu. Check it out. Very, very good book. One of my favorite books of 2016. And I would have to say that uh, his other book, uh, The Master Switch, I also highly recommend. I would say both of these books are essential 
books if you're interested in media or communication of any sort, please check them out. And I will certainly be reading any future books by Tim Wu. So yeah, that's all I pretty much have to say. This is an eye-opener and I loved it and I think you will too.